Hi there, my name is Ewan Nicholson. Welcome to my YouTube channel, Remembering Love. The subject of today's video is how smartphones can be bad for healing CPSD or childhood trauma. Now, I use the word can. I'm not out to say smartphones are categorically bad. The irony isn't lost on me. You're probably watching this on a smartphone. I'm making it on a smartphone. I'm here to look at a particular aspect of the way we use smartphones, the way that affects our nervous system, the way it affects we engage socially, and the long-term implications for that on healing childhood trauma and CPSD. And um, to do that, I'm going to go through a number of different things. So let me share with you what's going to be in this video, what you're going to learn, what we're going to gain, what we're going to understand, uh, and let me lay that all out for you. So to begin with, we're going to talk about polyvagal theory, which is a theory, a new theory of the, how the nervous system operates, in particular how we socially engage and how that really affects how we view social engagement and what is involved when it comes to actually socially connecting and socially engaging with people. Then we're going to look at where does smartphones fit into that and how does that support that process or not support that process as we'll see. And then at the end I'm going to give some tips and advice on how you can avoid or minimize the damage this form of communication can have on your social engagement system. So to begin with, let's look at polyvagal theory. And you could have hour long videos on this. I'm going to do a very basic synopsis or a very basic summary of what this is and particularly how it's going to relate to the subject of using smartphones. So let's have a look at what is polyvagal theory and what is the social engagement system. The social engagement nervous system is highly developed in mammals and especially in primates like us humans. Dr. Porge, who developed polyvagal theory, recognizes that these three systems operate as a hierarchy related to their evolutionary development. When mammals evolved, the third autonomic system came into being as a way to ensure the safety of the young until they are old enough to protect themselves. The social engagement system supports bonding between babies and their mothers and or caregivers. This involves endearing facial expressions, eye contact, sound and maternal speech and baby responses. It underlies breastfeeding, including the sucking and swallowing. This system also facilitates social interactions on all levels. It is the social engagement system that recognizes and fosters safety in our relationships. So there's a basic summary of the social engagement system, which has you know, been developed by this Dr. Porge. Uh, it's kind of revolutionized how we understand our nervous system. And in particular, it's revolutionized how we understand treating trauma. Um, and what you'll see over the last 20 years, there's been a big emphasis on understanding the way childhood trauma, CPSD, affects our body. And there's been a movement away, not away, but a movement to include uh, somatic therapy and understanding the impact trauma has on our nervous system, particularly the social engagement system, and looking at that as a kind of bottom-up, top-down healing process. So the way we socially engage and what engages our social engagement system really matters. Now if you want to understand on a practical level what is your social engagement system, how can you tell when it's been activated, think of this very simple scenario. Think of someone you really care for, you have a really great connection with and you haven't seen them for a couple of months, maybe you've been locked in with COVID and finally you get to meet up, they walk through the door, you see them, your face lights up, you're really happy, you come and give them a hug, a high five, whatever, you make eye contact, hey, how are you doing, how are you doing, oh it's so good to see you. And as that interaction is happening, your social engagement system is activated. There is voice, there is eye contact, there's touch, there's a sense of connection. Um, and that is your social engagement system and that is engaging and connecting all the time. And this is what it's important to understand that when it comes to engaging socially, connecting socially, it isn't just a mental and emotional phenomena, it's a nervous system phenomena. Our nervous system is receiving messages and responding to messages on an unconscious level that we're obviously not even aware of. It's happening without thinking, oh, I'm making eye contact. Oh, look at that person's facial cues. I need to respond with my facial cues. This is all going on just 
automatically. It's just a natural response. In the same way that if someone approaches us with an aggressive look, our nervous system is responding to that, maybe even before our conscious mind realizes that. So what's happening all the time is the ability to feel safe, the ability to feel connected, is not just a theoretical, mental and emotional thing. It is a physical thing. It is a nervous system thing. And what you see in the definition that we, we looked at there is there are specific things that engage and activate the social engagement system. And they are not emojis and GIFs and memes. They are these things like facial expressions, eye contact, sounds of maternal speech and baby responses. And I would just add another one there that's not part of the, you know, the scientific list, which is touch, you know, human connection, human touch, touching someone's elbow, giving someone a hug, uh, patting someone on the back, just the, the physical proximity of human touch and connection has an effect on us. It's not just some arbitrary, immeasurable thing. So there's some intuitive awareness we have that touch, connection, eye contact is required to feel a nervous system to feel safe. So what does all that mean when it comes to using smartphones? And this is where we hit a problem. This process of social engagement came online, you know, he's talking about from the primates. Primates have been around for I think around about 55 million years or 50 million years, like a long, long, long time. Humans, we've been around what, 250, Homo sapiens, we've been around 250,000 years. So you're talking about this need for connection and gauging safety on our nervous system has been a system that's, that's been operational for 55 million years. And what's happened in the last 10 or 20 is we are now socially, in inverted commas, engaging and communicating with each other, which literally bypass all those cues. When you are sending a message to someone on WhatsApp, there is no eye contact, there is no voice recognition, there is no facial cues, there is no human touch, it is just texting, it is just a mental message, it's not even in real time. So in the last 20 years we've subverted and bypassed a process that's been online for 55 million years, maybe even longer, and we have to really look and say, like what effect does that have on us, you know, as humans? What effect does that have on our nervous system? And I think on one level, just it's intuitively obvious that, that it, it creates a deficiency in our ability to connect and feel safe, to socially engage. And what's, what's misleading is these apps and um, social networks, they use the language of social connection. It's called social media. Uh, these are messaging apps, communication apps, but they're not really, not as far as our nervous system is concerned. And this is the phenomena that we experience. You can spend a whole evening communicating with people on WhatsApp, Facebook, Instagram, whatever it may be, but if you've had no audio, you've not really been talking to someone, you've had no facial contact, facial cues, you've had no human touch, you're just texting back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, responding to a comment, posting a comment, putting a meme up, sending a message to your friend on WhatsApp, sending one on Messenger, back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. And you do that all night in between watching TV or watching something on the YouTube, the YouTube, YouTube. Um, yeah, to some degree, mentally, you think, I've been communicating to my friends all night. I've been communicating to friends I have on Facebook all night, or I've been communicating to my mom, etc., etc., etc. But as far as your nervous system is concerned, as far as your body is concerned, you've not been communicating to anyone. You've not had social engagement. Your social nervous system has not been engaged. It's a mental phenomena, or an emotional phenomena, but physiologically, your body is going to feel lonely. Your body is going to feel sort of connection malnourished. And this is what we see. And I think people just have some intuitive awareness of this is exactly what's going on. And, and there is science like this that helps validate it. But I think it's just our own intuitive lived experience. I mean, there are people with severe morbid obesity that are consuming an enormous amount of calories every day of, of uh, highly processed foods with highly processed fats and sugars 
but they're severely malnourished, yet they're consuming this enormous amount of calories every day, yet they're not really consuming any real nutrients. And I think we have a communication connection version of that where we're spending all this time communicating and engaging, yet we end up with this kind of connection malnourishment or this malnourishment of actual real connection. Because real connection, as far as our nervous system is concerned, involves eye contact, it involves hearing, voice, it involves touch and connection. And if we're not getting that, then we're not really getting engagement socially. We're getting something else, whatever you want to call it. But it's not as far as our body's concerned, as far as our nervous system that's been primed for this for millions of years, we are not getting that. And that you have to be really, really careful. I think we have to be really, really careful that as a population, as a culture, as a society, as a world. But in particular, if you're in the process of trying to heal childhood trauma, CPSD, then activating your sense of safety, engaging socially, calming your nervous system down and feeling safe is a fundamental building block from which everything else that you're going to work on in terms of cognitive therapy, gestalt therapy, talk therapy is built on. And you can, you know, you're going to feel it. You're going to feel a body loneliness. You're going to feel if that's your only source of social engagement, you are not really socially engaging. So let me give a few basic tips and some advice on how to deal with this. And I think the first thing is just to understand that like we are being diverted in this means of communication. This isn't a natural phenomena. It's a phenomena led by very large multi-billion dollar corporations that are kind of herding us into this way of communicating with each other. They're colonizing the means and mechanisms we communicate and they are subverting millions of years of the way we communicate into a totally new means and method, really not against our will, but we never really signed up to this. We never really said, yes, this is how I want to communicate from now on. It's just, well, it's technology, things are evolving without really any care and consideration of the cost. And, and the benefit of this instant messaging is one thing, but there is a cost we're incurring. So I think the first thing from an advice point of view is to be aware that we are being corralled into this. This isn't happening by chance or just by natural evolution. This is being guided and directed by a profit motive essentially. And it's a, a reshaping of the way we communicate as humans that's fundamentally against what we've been doing for a long, long time. And there are consequences to that. The first thing to understand, it takes a certain degree of conscientiousness of being deliberate in how you use these technologies. Because if you don't think about it, you just kind of go along, then you are going to be guided in a way that does not work in your own best interest. So the first thing is to get a sense of like, I need to really think about this. I need to really be conscious and aware and pay attention to how I communicate and when I communicate and, and the way I communicate. So I think that's just one very basic thing to kind of be aware of. The second thing is, You've got to stop seeing um, communicating via smartphone, WhatsApp, Messenger as actual real social interaction. It's not. You've got to understand that from your nervous system. It's not. Now, I'm lucky enough. I live with two teenage daughters. I'm married. I live in a relatively vibrant community. I'm out and about. I have coffee with my friends. I would consider I'm socially engaging on a personal level you know, quite a lot. So I feel like I don't necessarily need to kind of stop this, compensate with that. But if you're living alone, if you work at home and you don't have that luxury or that privilege to just wake up in the morning and immediately engage with people, then you really need to start thinking about how am I going to do that? So to start with, I would say trying to start call people. It's old school, but just try that. Just start at least having the audio part of it. If you can talk on um, FaceTime or you can talk on Zoom and you can have the actual eye contact as well, even better. But try start you know, supplementing the, the texting back and forth with friends to actual audio conversations where you're talking to them and, and visually seeing them as well. That's going to help as well. So, so to do that, you have to start prioritizing that type of communication. You have to start seeing that my nervous system needs 
audio, facial cues, eye contact. It needs that to feel safe, to feel connected, to feel present. And in this time of the pandemic and everything shutting down, it's even more important. The second thing that I would recommend is what makes all this even harder is when you do go out, when you're out on the bus, when you're, you're, you're walking around in public, people are even less engaged, there's less eye contact, there's less talk back and forth. People are there stuck on their phones. And so the process you think, well, at least if I get out of the house, I'll be having that social engagement, that, that's becoming even more and more limited. So the minimum we can do is when we are out, and I have to do this really conscientiously, I have to really decide, I'm gonna keep my phone in my pocket, or at times I'm not gonna take my phone out, it's not a big deal. And when I'm with friends having a coffee, I put my phone away, I turn it off or whatever, but I'm not interrupting that social engagement with a constant back and forth with my phone. Because that pull towards the phone where you put it on the table and you, even if you turn it the other way around and you quickly check it while they're at the toilet or in between something, you kind of look at it, that pull to pick up your phone is totally manufactured. It's not real. You're being manipulated into that. I'm being manipulated into that. And I feel it. I feel the pull of it. And it's just really harmful. It's harmful to our bodies, it's harmful to our hearts, it's harmful to our relationships. But it's against the tide of convention, sadly. It's just where it's all going and it feels like it's hard to do that. So I think when it comes to this process of healing CPSD, we need to understand how important engaging socially is and feeling safe within our nervous system. And we are being subverted to not do that, to start communicating in this way, or not start, we've begun communicating this way, this antithetical to the process of feeling safe and connected in our human relationships. And you just gotta know that. Social media is not social, it's mental. As far as your nervous system's concerned, if you've spent a whole evening communicating back and forth with someone on Facebook, or you've been playing Candy Crush, or online Scrabble, it doesn't know the difference. All it is is your fingers are moving back and forth. It isn't a social connection. It doesn't engage your social engagement system at all. So yeah, my advice or my invitation is to start trying to be conscious and be aware that your nervous system has its own intelligence and its own needs. And you need to nourish that social engagement system with social engagement, with eye contact, touch, heartfelt connection, facial cues, voice, all these things, they matter. And nourishing that part of your nervous system with real social engagement will help contribute to whatever healing process you're in. But if you subvert that, you divert that, you start thinking that talking on WhatsApp all evening is social engagement, you know, your nervous system doesn't understand that. So we have to work on all levels. We have to work mentally, we have to work emotionally, and we have to work within our physicality. And we have that integration, and we all know it. That, that, that when we meet up with friends, and we have dinner, and we talk, and we laugh, and we connect, and, and, and we feel that, that connection, we hug them goodbye, et cetera, et cetera. In Spain, it takes 30 minutes to kiss everyone goodbye. And you have that connection. It is not the same as sitting on your phone all night, texting people back and forth. It just isn't. And there's science to show why that is, but we don't even need the science. Our intuitive experience tells us that. So trust that, follow that, be true to that, but be aware you are going against the tide. You are going against the stream of where we're being pushed. So you have to be very vigilant, conscientious, clear that I want to nourish my social engagement system. I want to nourish my need for human connection. And to do so, I have to follow and listen to what my body needs. So look, I hope this has made sense. I hope this has been meaningful for you and helped. If you've enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe. Um, if you've got any comments or any experiences, please put it in the comments below. I'd love to hear from you. Thank you for coming and please take care of yourself. Bye-bye.